I'm going to invite Carol Shelby to come up with me for this first one. Um, you guys know Carol is the original pioneer of the performance car market. Carol's worked very closely with us and with many of the same individuals for the last three years on the Ford GT. He was a spiritual leader around the, that product, uh, a world-class performance car. On top of that, we've been very strategic about what we've, we've done with Carol. You, you, the GT, you've seen the Cobra concept car, you've seen the GR1 on the auto show circuit this year, and now this product. All of these products are really, there's a strong heritage and linkage back to what Carol has done. There's a context there, and that's really part of what our approach is all about. Every single Mustang that you see around this room can trace its legacy and roots back to the, the original GT350R, including this car. So without further ado, Carol, if you can join me. Ladies and gentlemen, the all Shelby Cobra GT500. You heard Phil allude to the tremendous success that we're seeing in the marketplace with the Mustang. And it really starts with the foundation and this platform. When we introduced this car, we talked about doing an all new world class platform that's capable of not only delivering an affordable V6, a great performance in, in the GT, but also the convertible. The next step for us was look at performance. And we went out and we're, we're racing it. Jay worked on the Ford racing car that's in the Grand Am series. We're doing pretty good. The first race, we entered three cars. They came in first, second, and ninth. Uh, and we beat some pretty good cars. BMW M3, uh, Porsche 996, 997s, Cadillac CTSVs, um, Nissan 350Zs. We're beating the best cars from Europe and the best cars from Japan. The next step for us, once we proved the car and the platform on the racetrack, was to do this car. You can see Doug and his team have done a great job with the styling. Look at that Shelby over there and look at this one. You'll see many, we've done a great job of blending the classic Shelby heritage styling cues with SVT engineering and performance. The racing stripes, Le Mans racing stripe down the car. Uh, the front fascia really reminiscent of the 68 Shelby GT 500. Doug and his team have also done a great job of blending in many of the modern Cobra SVT styling cues. The functional heat extractors on the roof the signature round fog lamps. If you go to the back, the high back uh, spoiler, tape stripes on the side, the badging, the car looks great. It also drives well. Underneath the hood, 5.4 liter V8 engine, dual overhead cam, 32 valves, supercharged. We expect this car to deliver well in excess of 450 horsepower and 450 foot-pounds of torque. Um, made it to a six-speed transmission, trusty uh, T, uh, T56. And then let's talk a little bit about the chassis. We know about the, the, the chassis capabilities. You guys have driven the cars. You've done the back-to-back -back comparisons against IRS cars. It's a non-issue. We went out and raced it. This platform is race-proven. What we've done is we've retuned the suspension, bigger bars and springs, revised shock damping, bigger wheels and tires, 19-inch wheels and tires, larger brakes to handle the stopping capabilities. 14-inch front, four-piston Brembo brakes with cross-drilled rotors. On the rear, 13-inch rotors. Overall, a tremendous package. The interior is a fantastic story as well. One of the things that our customers have told us loud and clear is when we get into this price segment, they expect us to raise the level of quality and refinement. And if you look at this car, a great example of collaboration with the base organization we're delivering a leather wrap interior uh, upgrade package. It's also going to be available in, in the 07 time frame on the base program, an example of our, the synergies between the base program and SVT. That's a very quick overview. I'm going to turn it over to Carol. He's had a chance to drive the car. Carol, what do you think of this product? When I came back a couple of weeks ago, I didn't know exactly what to expect. I knew the car looked good. I knew that it should be an excellent car, but when I got into it and drove it, I put in about five hours, and I'll tell you, I said the same thing that every one of you in this room are going to say when you sit down and when you drive it, and that's wow. 
the car feels like it has a lot more horsepower than, than it has, but not only that, it gets it to the ground. It's everything that I dreamed of many years ago when we built the originals. This car, 35, 40 years later, I'm, I can't tell you how proud I am to be a part of it. And the perceived value and the horsepower of this car is going to turn every one of you in this room on, I'm sure. And I'm just very, very proud and happy to be a part of it. I've known a lot of you in here for, seems like all our lives, doesn't it? But anyway, thank you for being here. And I, as I said, I'm proud to be a part of SVT and this car answers all my dreams. Thank you. We've been working together for four or five years now, just on a very quiet basis. And it's just, we're just getting around to announce it. And we didn't want to say a lot about it until we had a product to announce. And, and we got a good one here. We got something that, it, it's really the perceived value of this. When the price comes out, when the performance and when the people drive this, they're going to see there's never been anything like it on the American market. Well, how does it make you feel seeing something like this is, that is such, it was inspired by something you did? At 82, I never dreamed that it would ever happen. And here we've got Hal and, and Phil, Phil Martin, and these guys have put something together that I couldn't have put together myself because now the people are much more sophisticated. That was a bunch of us hot rodders that did this 40 years ago. And now we've got some really smart guys doing it. And with emissions, with safety and all that, all the stuff you have to put up with now, it, it's a lot different than it was 40 years ago. And little individuals can't do it. It has to be done by the, by the large companies and by the people inside of that. And they're the modern day hot rodders. It works. Same hot sure. So they still yes, do they it. do. They love they, the designers. They, they, how that worked on it, and with the design team, so enthusiastic. It reminded of the guys 40 years ago that did it. It's just they have a little more technology to work with. A lot more technology. It takes a lot more. Without electronics, you couldn't put 500 horsepower in a car now. How does this feel to drive? You've had a long time. No, it's very well balanced. That's one of the things that that I ask at first, you know, we have a large engine, four valve, heavy engine, I said, it's gotta be balanced. And the guys, O'Donnell and the guys that put it together, it's balanced perfectly. You'll never know that it, that it has that big engine up front. And it, and it is, it's about 40, 52, 48, and it, it works. It gets it to the ground. So why do people like these kinds of cars? What is it about these that, that people like? It's one of the first things that, uh, that a child wants is his own automobile from the time he's old enough to communicate. And they like performance. Like three years old, I used to sit in 28 whip it, stand up the floorboard and say, Daddy, let's go faster. And think of all the people out there. Look at NASCAR, look at drag racing, look at, look at the performance uh, industry, how big it is. Go to SEMA, you see? things now that you never dreamed. Look at the mainstream media now. You have all these reality shows about automobiles. It's just they it's just coming in into its own. It's just beginning to get there now on mainstream. It's it's just been a bunch of hot rodders for years and years. It started in California in the thirties. And look at it now. So how does that make you feel? It's like lucky at eighty two with a heart transplant and a kidney transplant to be a part of this. Never dreamed.